Welcome back everyone. We're outside again. Might hear a little bit of wind come through though. They now went down the hill to the Valley of Humiliation. It was a steep hill and their feet slid as they went on, but they took great care. And when they had reached the foot of it, Piety said to Christina, this is the valley where Christian met with Apollyon and where they had that fierce fight, which I know you must have heard of. But be of good cheer, as long as we have Mr. Greatheart to guide us, there is nothing here that will hurt us except those sights that spring from our own fears. James, which is one of the sons, see there is a sign with words on it. I will go and read it. So he went and found that these words were cut on it. But the slips which Christian met with while he was coming through here and the fights he had in this place warn all those who come to the Valley of Humiliation. Mr. Greatheart said, It is not so hard to go up this hill as it is to go down, and that can be said about few hills in this part of the world. But we will remember Christina. He is at rest, and he had a brave fight with the enemy. Let him who dwells on high grant that we fare no worse when our strength is put to the test. This valley brings forth much fruit. Now as they went on, they met a poorly clothed boy who kept watch on some sheep. Okay, here's the little boy. He's poor. He's watching over the sheep. He has a sheep dog to help him out. He had a fine, fresh face, and as he sat on a bank, he sang a song. Hark, said Great Heart, to the words of that boy's song. He that is down needs fear no fall. He that is low no pride. He that is humble ever shall have God to be his guide. Then said Great Heart, do you hear him? I dare, dare say this boy leads as happy a life as he had, as he that is clad in silk, and that he wears more of what is called heart's ease. Samuel, another one of the sons, in what part of this valley was it that Apollyon fought Christian? Okay, so here's, here's the area that they're coming up to. It does not look great. Samuel wants to know. Great Heart responded. They, the fight took place at the part of the plain which is called Forgetful Green. If those who go on their way to meet with a shock, it is because they have forgotten good which they have received from the hand of him who dwells on high. Mercy. I think I feel as well in this place as I have felt anywhere else on our journey. This valley has a sweet grace and it pleases my mind. I love to be in such a spot as this, where there are no wagon wheels to make a racket. Here one may think about what he is, where he came from, and for what the king has made him. Here one may meditate and pray. Just then they thought that the ground below them shook, but the guide told them to be of good cheer and to watch their step, lest they should accidentally fall. Then James felt sick, but I think the cause of it was fear. Christina gave him some of the drink which Mr. Interpreter had put into her hands and three of the pills which Mr. Skill had given them and the boy soon got well. Then they went on a while and Christina said, what is that thing on the road? A thing of such a shape I have not seen it all my life. Joseph said, what is it? A vile thing, child, a vile thing, she said. Joseph, but what is it like? Christina, it is like, I can't tell what, just then it was far off, now it is near. Great heart, well, well, let them that are most afraid keep close to me. Then it went out of sight of all of them. But they had not gone far when Mercy cast a look back and saw as she thought a great beast come up behind them with a loud roar. There's the beast roaring. That would be crazy. This noise made them all quake with fright, except for their guide who fell back and put the rest in front of him. But when the brute saw the great heart meant to fight him, he drew back and was seen no more. Not long after they left the spot, a great mist fell on them and they could not see. What shall we do, said they. Their guide told them not to fear, but to stand still while he tried to find a safe path out. Then said Christina de Mercy, now I see what my poor, dear Christian went through. I have heard much of this place. 
poor man, he went here in the dead of the night, and no one was with him. Who can tell what the valley of the shadow of death should mean until they actually see it? To be here fills my breast with fear. Great heart, it seems now as if the earth were a prison around us. I would not boast, but I believe that we shall still find our way out. Come, let us pray for light to him that can give it. So they did weep and pray, and since the path was now smoother, they proceeded much faster. Mercy, to be here is not as sweet as it was at the gate, or at Mr. Interpreter's, or at the house which we just left. Oh, said one of the boys, it is not so bad to go through this place as it, it is to dwell here for all time, for this place surely shows us how blessed the city is to which we go, and how little we have left behind us. Great heart. Well said, Samuel. Thou dost now speak like a man. Samuel, why surely if I get out of this place, I think I shall prize that which is right and good more than I have done all my life. Great heart, we shall find our way out by and by. So on they went. Joseph, can we not see the end of this valley yet? Great heart, look to your feet for you will soon be where the snares are. So they took great care where they stepped. Great heart, men come here and bring no guide with them. That is why they die from the snares they meet with in the way. Poor Christian, it is strange he made it out of this place safely, but God dwelt in his soul and he had a stout heart of his own or else he could not have done it. Christina, I wish that there were an inn here where we could all rest. Well, said Mr. Honest, one whom they had just met, there is such a place not far off. Okay, so here's the place that they're looking at. Down the path, a possible place to be able to rest. So there they went, and the host, whose name was Gaius, said, Come in, for my house was built for pilgrims such as you. Great heart. Good Gaius, let us eat. What have you for us to eat? We have gone through many dangers and stand much in need of food. Gaius, it is too late for us to go out and seek food, but anything we have you may eat. The meal was then prepared. Near the end of the feast, as they all sat around the table to crack nuts, Old Honest said to Gaius, Tell me what this verse means. A man there was, and some did count him mad. The more this man gave, the more he had. Then all the youths gave a guess as to what Gaius would say about it. He sat still a while and then said, He that gives his goods to the poor shall have as much and ten times more. Joseph, I did not think, sir, that you would know its meaning. Gaius, ah, I have learned from my Lord to be kind, and I find gain by it. They spent ten days at the house of Gaius, and then they left. But on the last day he made them a feast of which they all ate and drank. Isn't that so kind? He's being selfless and giving, sharing. Great heart. Now Gaius, the hour has come that we must be gone. Tell me what I owe you for this long stay at your inn, for we have been here for quite some time. Gaius, at my house no one pays, for the good Samaritan told me that I was to look to him for all my expenses. Now they left him and went on their way. They met with all kinds of dangers and fears, and finally they came to a place which was called Vanity Fair. There they went to the house of Mr. Mason, who said to his guests, If there be anything that you need, just say so, and we will do what we can to get it for you. Well then, said they, we should like to see some of the good folk in this town. Mason gave a stamp with his foot, at which his servant Grace jumped up. He sent her to fetch some of his friends who were in the house, and they all sat down to a meal. Then, said Mr. Mason, as he held out his hand to point to Christina, My friends, I have a guest here who are on their way to Zion. But who do you think this is? This is the wife of Christian, whom, with his friend Faithful, the men of this town did treat so badly. Well, said they, who would have thought we would meet Christina at this place? May the king who you love and serve bring you where he is in peace. 
Then they told her that the blood of faithful had lain like a load on their heart, and that since they had killed him, no more men had been sent to the stake at Vanity Fair. In those days, they said, good men could not walk the streets, but now they can show their heads. Christina, her sons, and Mercy made this place their home for many years. Now one day, a huge snake came out of the woods and killed some of the folk of the town. No one was brave enough to face it, but all fled when they heard that it came near, for it took off the babies by scores. But Great Heart and the rest of the men who were at Mr. Mason's house made up their minds to kill this snake and so rid the town of it. Okay. So there is the snake and Great Heart and some of the men are gonna kill it there at Vanity Fair. So they went forth to meet it, and at first the snake did not seem to notice them. But since they were strong and well-armed men, they drove it back. Then they lay in wait for it and fell on it until at last they knew it would die of its wounds. By this deed, Mr. Greatheart and the rest won the admiration of the whole town. The time now drew near for them to go on their way. Mr. Greatheart went first as their guide, and I saw in my dream that they came to the stream on this side of the delectable mountains. Okay, so there's the stream, the little waterfall. Beautiful and peaceful. Fine trees, the leaves of which were good for the health, grew on each bank, and the fields were green all year round. Here they could lie down and be safe. Here too there were folds for sheep and a house was built in which to raise the lambs. There was one who kept watch over them, who would take them in his arms and lay them on his breast. Okay, who is that? Jesus, our good shepherd, taking care of the lambs. Okay, we're gonna end for now. I'll see you in the next video.